Hi and welcome to the third day of production. What I'm going to show you today is some CSS fundamentals. What I want to do is I want to create a page that's got the content in the center of the page, like pretty much every site that we do has. I want that content to have two columns. I want the main content column to come first in the code for SEO purposes. And I want a header and a footer in there. So this is following on from some of the layout basics that we looked at already in design. So I always start with my HTML. That's best practice. So what I want to do is I want to have a, a div for my main content. So I'm going to call it div class equals um, container, which we quite often do. Another thing that is quite useful is to put an HTML comment in by your closing tags. And I'll say slash div dot container. Now that doesn't mean anything to the web page. It's ignored because it's in this, this comment. That's the style for an HTML comment. That helps me know that wherever this div ends up, because there's going to be lots of stuff in the middle, wherever it goes, I'm going to know it's matching tag. So I'm going to have a container. I want my body to have probably a light grey background. I want my container to be white. Within my container, I want two more divs for columns. Now, when you're writing your class names for good semantic markup, you shouldn't use stylistic references. So I could put div class equals left column and then div class equals right column. But that's going to tie my hands later on if I decide to sort my columns round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it main column. And I'm going to just copy that. And second column. And that's where I'm going to put my content. So then here will be an h1 main column stuff here. And in my inside my second column, I will put a heading two to say other stuff. Let's load the page and see what happens. Okay, so we've got basically two divs, and they are stacked on top of each other. I can show you by in my style saying that any div is going to have a red border. I use this one pixel solid red border a lot. Okay, so we've got two divs. Because the div is block level, it'll go across the whole page, and then anything that precedes it or follows it has to be on a different line. Now I am going to want these two things to line up. And what else do I want? Oh, yeah, before my columns, I'm going to want a header. Give class equals header, and in there I'll put logo, etc. will go there. And at the very end, I'm going to want Inside that footer, I'll probably put some navigation. So let's have another look. Okay, so I've got four divs. They're all stacking on top of each other, but that's pretty much the content that I want. Okay, so let's go into styling it. The first thing that I want to do is I want to make the background of my whole page light grey. So to do that, I'm going to style the body tag. Very light grey. Yeah, you can barely notice it. I'll make it a bit darker. Okay, so that's useful for now. I want my container to be white. So I'll say dot container, which means anything with the class name container. Background FFF, which is the hex code for white. And then we've got a, a white thing there. Right, what's next? Okay, so next thing is I want my columns to be side by side. And the way to do that in CSS is to use something called float. A float is like when you have an image and you want the text to wrap around the image. So you tell the image to float either to the left or to the right. And what that means is that it doesn't make the things that follow it 
wrap round to another line. They'll actually carry on from where it is. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead, main column and second column will be float left. Let's see what happens. Okay, so there my main column is only becoming, it's only as wide as it needs to be, and then my second column is following on from it. But then what's happening is because they're both floated, this next thing, which is the footer, is occupying the the space following those things. I, I don't want it to do that. And the way to do that in CSS is to say clear, well, I could say clear left, or I could say clear both. And that means if there's anything floated, either to the left or to the right, you've got to finish, you've got to clear those, and you've got to start after they finish. Save that. And there we go, there's my footer underneath. That's good. Now, I want my columns to be properly sized. So I want the main column to be about three quarters of the width, and I want my second column to be the other 25%. So I've got, I've got main column width 75%. expecting them now to line up side by side, but they're not. The reason they're not is because this actually now adds up to more than 100%. The reason is because they've got a border. Is this border one pixel? So this is being 75% plus two pixels, and this one is 25% plus two pixels. If I remove the border, I expect them to, yeah, there they go, line up just fine. Now I don't want my whole column to be the full width of the page, because if I maximise that window, then I've got a huge wide page, and that's going to make my line lengths very long, and very long lines actually slower and harder to read. So what I want is I want my main content all to fit into a particular width, and the tag for that is dot container. So I'm going to say I'm going to give it a width. I'm going to give it a width. Let's try 40 M's. That's quite narrow, but I'm working with a narrow window here. Okay, it's 40 M's, but it's not now in the middle. I want it in the middle. So because I want everything on this page to be kind of centered, I'm going to tell the body to align everything to, this, to the center. But still, this is not to the center. margin auto. Okay, now that's going to work there. It doesn't necessarily work in every browser, but it's working for now. And that's pretty useful. I like a little bit more space at the top of my body as well, so I'm going to say I want you know, four X's at the top and nothing to the side, and I'll keep it the same for it. This means there'll be four X's at the bottom and then nothing to the right as well. Okay, a bit too much down to two. Okay, so that's looking kind of tidy now. Great. So my header is going to have to have obviously some content in there. It'll have a logo. And it'll also need to be a particular height. Now I haven't styled the header yet, so let's go ahead and style the header. Background. Let's just say green for now. And color white. I could type white in there as well. I'm also going to give it a specific height. I want to say it's going to be 75 pixels high. There we go. That's fairly useful. I might also want my text to be aligned to the left, as do I in the main column and the other stuff as well. So the way I'll do that is to copy these. So I say main column and second column and header text align left. 
An easier way may actually be just to put that in my container. Let's try that. That's going to apply to then everything within the container, effectively overriding this text to the line center. This instruction comes first, it applies to the body and everything in it. Then, because all my other stuff is inside the container, the text to line left will then override the text to line center. So then everything's now gone over to the left. That's fairly useful. So let's put these columns in order. I'm going to keep the borders there for the time being. Right, so one thing I could do is literally just drop down the, the widths a little bit. And that's not bad. That's one way to do it. Another thing I could do is a very useful trick, which is called the negative margin trick. This is a way to adjust the way that things fit together a little bit. Now, margin is the amount of space that's outside of a box. So if I say main column and second column have both got margin of five pixels all the way around them. There we go. They've got some space of five pixels above, to the left and to the bottom. There's a space of ten pixels here because this one's got five pixels below it and this one's got five pixels above it. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is going to set my margin to minus one pixel. And there you can see that they are all budged one pixel upwards, one pixel to the left. So whereas we had two pixels of red here before, those borders are now actually overlapping. I'm just going to leave this how it is for now, even though there's a slight overlap here. Because I know that when I remove my borders, it's all going to look just fine. So what I want to do now is I want to make this navigation list at the bottom. I want it to be center aligned, like a lot of footers are. Firstly, let's style the footer a little bit. Give it a background. And make it charcoal gray. OK, now my text has disappeared because it's still in black. These things are actually going to be links, so... I'm going to put in some empty links for now. Now the text is blue. They're still in a, a bulleted list with some black bullets. So I want to change that navigation. So I want a footer. What, what have I got? I've got a link within a list item, within an unordered list, within the footer. I could just say any link within the footer is going to be color white. And I also want this list within the footer not to be bulleted. And the way I do that is to say footer ul list style none. I hope then my bullets have disappeared, although it's fairly hard to tell. So I want these list items to stack up next to each other and not be stacked in that way. Let's see why they're stacked. Put the old red border on. Okay, they're stacked because a list item by default is a block level element, which means it's taking up all of that width and making the next thing follow on on the next line. So what I'm going to do is change the footer list item. So instead of saying block level display block, I'm going to call it display in line. Now they're following side by side, and that's great. I need some space inside my footer as well. It's, everything's crammed together pretty much. So, whereas we said that the space outside of an element is margin, the space inside of an element is called padding. If you imagine a box with a present inside it. You put padding inside the box to cushion the present from the side of the box. So I'm going to put some padding in and I'm going to say it's going to be 1x at the top and bottom and 2ms at the sides. There we go. It's a bit, a bit nicer. Let me take the border off those things now because we've solved that problem. There they go. 
they're a bit close together actually. So one thing I want to do is actually add some padding in there. So I'm going to add the padding within the link, which should also make the link, the clickable bit of the link, bigger. So ETC is quite a small target for somebody to click. I'm going to add no padding to the top and bottom, but two M's of padding to the sides. That's quite a lot. Let's put it down to one M. And there you can see that that is part of that link already. Let's style my links a little bit. confirming it's a link by showing me an underline. So what else do I need to do? I want to center align these, obviously. So I'm going to say my footer will be text align center as well. And there we go. But somehow they've gone further over to the right. And the reason is because they're still list items and they've still actually got some indent to the left of each of them by default. So what I need to do is to say margin zero padding zero and that should fix this. Uh, I should probably also do the same for the for the unordered list itself. Okay, that's much better. So there was obviously some margin to the top and bottom of the unordered list, which I wasn't aware of. I'm now going to add a bit more padding to the top and bottom of my footer to make it look a bit better. And there we go. So we've got a header. We've got two columns side by side. And we've got a footer. Now if I resize my page, you see that's all the fixed, fixed width. It's always in the center of the page. Now I may want my lines to go bigger when the font size changes. And Chrome's doing that for me automatically. And let's see, because we've defined our container in terms of EMs, then when I change the font size, so what I'm doing is holding the control key and rolling my mouse wheel, it changes the font size. You can also do control plus and control minus on the keyboard or command on a Mac. Now, if I'd set this to, say, 400 pixels, Chrome is also zooming it for me, but other browsers won't. That, that's telling it that it needs the, um, the width of this column to be an absolute number, but I prefer to do it in M's. I've chosen a small one here because of the small screen, but generally I'll start at about 60 EMs. What that means is that when the font size goes bigger or smaller, the whole width of the container and everything within it will scale as well. And that's good because it means that the, the container will scale in line with the lines of text, which means that you should avoid then text kind of resizing and jumbling around to, to change to fit its space, which is really good. So I hope this has been useful and we'll get on with some more production very soon. Yeah.